What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and today we are here to talk about the Venom movie tie-in prequel comic, which turned out to not really be a prequel. This actually surprised me a little bit. Uh, before we get into it, I will put a link down below, so if you want to go in the description box, you can read this comic for yourself, and remember, if you buy your tickets at AMC Theaters, chances are you will be able to pick one of these up when you go pick up your movie ticket. And I know some people were saying, hey, I didn't get verification on that when I bought my tickets. Typically, you don't uh, right away. I mean, some movies do, but some movies don't, and so... Uh, uh, you know, with the Venom movie, I think you just have to go into the theater opening weekend, and when you, you know, check in, pick up your tickets, you'll ask them about it there. They'll probably even have like a little box next to the, you know, ticket tearing person when when you're coming in to check in. There's probably going to be even a little box of comics, and they'll probably just give you one as you walk in. But uh, and I think some AMC's will offer you to buy it and they'll mail it to you. Uh, but I think these are going to be in the actual theaters. I'm pretty sure. So if any of you have any more information on that, let me know. But I I think you're okay as long as you hit AMC theater and. I know it is qualifying AMC theaters, so it might not be every AMC theater. So if you're not sure, you know, maybe call before you buy tickets or, or you know, go see it a second time at a different AMC theater once you find out. Because uh, I'm probably going to go see it twice opening weekend. I got my, you know, midnight showing on Thursday, and then I actually got Friday off work because I'm going to go in and do some prep work for my surgery that's at the end of October. So I scheduled it for October 5th because why not? Uh, so I can have the day off. And then after that, I'm going to probably go see the movie a second time and then film my initial initial reaction to the movie for you guys and then I'll probably wait till Monday to do a, a full review because mine will probably just be spoilers. I'm not going to do you know two versions and do like a non-spoiler one and a, and a full spoiler one. I'm just going to do one review but I will make like a quick two minute video just telling you my general thoughts on it so I guess that'll be as close to a non-spoiler review as you're going to get from me and uh, and then the rest I'll just talk about in full detail and I'll probably do like a half hour video at least uh, you know dissecting the movie and talking about it and hopefully by then I'll have seen it at least twice and let it sit with me for a day or two so I can gather my thoughts because I'm definitely not going to rush to get the actual review out. I'll put the initial thoughts up quickly so you guys have it so you can know if I just genuinely like it or not uh, but as far as like you know know me dissecting it and doing a discussion video we'll wait on that and then obviously whatever you respond in the comment section of the discussion video I will then make a video responding to those comments to include you guys in our you know kind of discussion and thought process of what we feel about the movie uh, so today let's go ahead and talk about this comic and I will say if you don't want any spoilers for the movie this has a few minor ones I don't feel like they're super big ones but there are some minor ones and there's some interesting information that this uh, little preview showed us. And uh, I also want to make mention that when you pick up the physical copy of this, I believe there's going to be an extra page in here that actually is a spoiler for the movie. So when you pick it up at the theater, you may not want to flip through it before you watch the movie because it might have an image in the back that might spoil something for you. At least that's what I heard. Um, I don't know what the image is, so I don't know if it's true or not. But I did hear that. So be you know be careful when you pick it up. Maybe just hold it, hold on to it tightly, and wait till after the movie before you peek through it, just in case it shows you a you know an image that you don't want to see that you want to wait for the movie. Because uh, that would be a bummer to get all the way to the movie without being spoiled and then getting getting spoiled by the promotional stuff for the movie at the theater. That would be a real bummer. So be careful. Um, but there is some stuff in here. So if you want to go in the movie clean, maybe back away now. I won't be offended. I'll completely understand. Uh, but for those of you who want to stay, the little bits of information we're going to get here. And again, this is written by Sean Ryan, who actually did do a Venom comic once. It was a Spider-Man comic where uh, Kingpin became Venom uh, for like one issue. And it's really good. It's something we're going to talk about on this issue uh, on this show coming up at some point, probably after the movie comes out. But it was a neat little one-shot storyline. Um, and, uh, and the art in it was really great. And the art in this by Simon Kudransky, is still really good. I like his stuff. The image on the cover obviously is by S-K-A-N, Scan, uh, who did the cover art. But inside, like I said, Simon Kudansky, who has done Spawn, who's worked on a lot of great comics that I really love, uh, kind of brought his style to this. And I like it overall. It's like pretty simple page layout, uh, layouts. Uh, panel layouts are pretty good. Lines are pretty clean. He does a lot of stuff digitally, uh, which you can tell in this because there's some instances where, you know, characters look almost like their movie counterparts and then other instances where they, they don't. So there's a little inconsistency there. There. Uh, but overall his style is captured really well and I, and I do like his style um, and so we have what I thought was going to be a prequel which turned out to be just a couple scenes from the movie uh, so this actually takes place during the film and it shows Eddie Brock like before getting the costume when he has the costume and then when he turns into Venom for the first time as we've seen in the trailer so luckily this doesn't spoil too much of the movie these are scenes we've already seen in the trailers so that's good but I was kind of hoping we would get a little bit of a prequel maybe a little bit of backstory on the symbiotes but maybe that reveals 
too much about the movie. Maybe they wanted to save that for the film and they didn't want to give that away. And if so, I completely understand. So in that case, if that is the case, I, I'm glad they didn't do it in this and, and you know, spoil or ruin something in the comic books. I'd rather them save it for the movie, assuming it's in the movie, you know, because he did say, uh, Ruben Fleischer did say that Riot and Venom, the suits, have a, a history together, have a backstory. And, uh, and so I'm kind of curious how that's going to play out in the film, and I hope it does. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to be mad that this comic didn't tell that story. Uh, so we'll, you know, time will tell. We'll see. But in this one, we have Eddie Brock at the you know, convenience store, and he's talking to Mrs. Chen, and we, you know, have Doris Skirth, who's played by Jenna, Jenny Slate. And Jenny Slate, we talked about before, we mentioned early on in our show, like, you know, early to episode 10 to 15 somewhere, that someone on the set, I think it was Atlanta Filming or someone, uh, referred, to her, uh, referred to her character as Doris Skirth. And we thought that was a code name, that they were trying to hide that the fact that she was like Dr. Ashley Kafka or something like that. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It looks like, you know, her name is actually Doris Skirth, or she introduces herself anyway way as Dora Skirth. Whether that's a lie and maybe she's actually a bad person and she's just tricking Eddie Brock to get captured uh, and be, uh, you know, experimented on, that's, you know, time will tell. You know, she could really be a good person trying to take down the Life Foundation from within or she could be lying to him. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see where they go in the movie with that. This comic doesn't tell you one way or the other. They just kind of set her up. So you just see her in the first page. Uh, and she says her name is Dora Skirth. So we have that information, which again, we kind of knew before, but it was neat to see it kind of official uh, in this sense. Uh, and then we have... Eddie Brock coming back to his apartment after he's been infected, and uh, Scott Hayes' character, who may or may not be Roland Treese, they don't say it in this, and he shows up to take down Eddie Brock. And what they realize is that Eddie Brock has the suit in him, uh, has the symbiote inside of him, and they didn't expect that. They just thought he took it, apparently. Um, so they're like, hey, you have some of our property, we want it back. And so when he's doing this, you know, there's like all the guys have tech on them and it's feeding information back to Carlton Drake. And he, we saw him in the trailer and slam his hands on the desk going like, bring me back my creature. So this kind of looks like that scene maybe, or tied to that scene where uh, Scott Hayes' character is like, you know, like, hey, you know, he has the suit inside of him. And, and, and uh, Carlton Drake's kind of surprised by that. And he's like, holy crap, he has the suit in him take him down and so they try to electrocute him they try to take him down and of course eddie brock and venom fight back and then he's in the alleyway talking to the suit and the suit does actually mention the planet clintar uh, which is another bit of information so that's really cool that clintar is going to be mentioned in the film of course we all probably assume that but we weren't sure and then i know a lot of people nowadays were like oh but donny cates is writing this and he's doing that maybe he you know got wind of something in the movie and he's trying to change the origin to, you know of the comics to fit more like the movie doesn't look like it looks like they are truly sticking to Planet of the Symbiotes and also the Lethal Protector storyline. Uh, and so Clintar in this is a planet and they address it as such. It is not a giant cage trapping a demon or a monster or god as far as we know so far. It is just a planet. Uh, and even Eddie Brock says, that's not a real planet. And the suit goes, yes, it is. It's where I'm from. Um, so yeah, so then you get the car chase scene with the motorcycle. Eddie Brock fights back. And then he crashes. The suit heals him. And he stands up as Venom on the last page. And he grabs Scott Hayes' character, lifts him up. And he's like, you know, we are Venom. And then you hear the suit going, time to feed. <laughs> and then that's where the book ends. And it ends with this, like, uh, last piece of artwork, um, you know, that I'll have up here on the screen that has like, you know, it's like one of the paintings, one of the recent posters that was released. And you'll see a new intro with some of those posters that I recorded outside of Golden Apple coming up on our first host number three review, which I'll try to get up in the next two days before issue four comes out. Uh, so I'll do my best. I know I'm behind on videos with my writing project and all, but I'm trying to get back on track now. So you guys let me know what you think. Overall, I thought this was a pretty good comic. I mean, there were some things in it that I was like, eh, I don't know, but if it's pulled great right from the movie, you know, it's like, all right, I get it. They're trying to just set up some of the scenes in the movie. They they don't want to give away too much. They're still trying to play it close to the vest. And they just wanted to make a fun little collectible for this, you know, those hardcore fans out there like us who are just curious about the movie and are, are excited for the movie. And I think this is their way of just creating something fun and getting it out there quickly and putting it out for the movie to come out um, and, you know, have it opening weekend for AMC Theater so general public can maybe get it and hopefully lead them into comic stores because I'm sure Marvel will put an ad in the back of the book somewhere saying, hey, you can buy Marvel books here, you can get a subscription unlimited here, or you can go to your local comic store, here's how you find your local comic store. I hope at least Marvel does that because that would be a great way to hopefully get more moviegoers to get into the comic stores uh, in their local areas because that is very important to the longevity of comics and the life of comics in general. And I want them to stick around a lot longer. And I know that you know sales and everything are down across the board on a lot of books and it does scare me 
as a fan. So hopefully you guys find something out there that you like and you support it with your money uh, because that's the only way these things are going to stick around. So let me know what you think of this comic. I hope you read it. If you haven't, again, link down below. Check it out for yourself and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.